there are various targeted things that are going to come out. So we'll get more data on the KRS G12C inhibitors. I think everyone's wondering if they're going to stick around a 50% response rate and the duration of response there. I think probably we might get what we're hoping for is some indication of the the biology as to what's giving them a 50% response rate. You know, is there heterogeneity in KRAS in other mutations that's influencing that? And also when people have had a response, some of them progress fairly rapidly, what are the mechanisms of acquired resistance? Um, I think other non-G12C, but other KRAS mutation approaches, um, I think we need some more mature data. So the Revolution Medicine SHIP2 inhibitor, we've seen some preliminary data that looked like it was pretty toxic um, and pretty modest activity. So I think that um, we'd like some more data on. Um, I think uh, in the ALK space, we'll probably get there's probably going to be a very interesting debate emerging in the ALK space because uh, the two big phase three studies in the first line setting, Alex and Alta 1L, differed in one fundamental uh, aspect. So Alex did not include within the study crossover from crizotinib to electinib. You know, you were on your own, and if you got access to it, great. Whereas the, the Alta 1L study had crossover built in. Now, from a business perspective, not including crossover is much better because you're likely to preserve an overall survival effect. Um, from a medical perspective, if, uh, if that emerges that, for example, if you look at the crizotinib control arm in both of those studies, and they're very different, i.e. if you build in uh, crossover, then you lift up that crizotinib control arm's overall survival. I think we might actually be in the position where we can challenge the assumption that it's all about the business decision, and maybe crossover should actually start to become an, uh, a moral imperative in some of these studies where there's enough data to say it actually really does work. And I think that would be a, a real maturity in our field if that does actually happen. Um, in terms of other targeted therapies, RET inhibitors are almost certainly going to get licensed this year. Met Exxon 14 is chasing that down. I still think because they're getting a response rate of about 40 to 50%, there's some underlying heterogeneity in the Met Exxon 14 population that has not yet emerged. That, I think, is, is waiting for a, a breakthrough. In terms of immunotherapy, there still seems to be a lot of, you know, PD-1 plus my favorite drug. I still feel in the absence of a predictive biomarker to say, these are the people you need to add this into, they're all going to fall on their face. So I'm desperately hoping that we get personalized medicine and immunotherapy. It really needs it. Um, I think the other, maybe the last big breakthrough that maybe we would see this year is the outcome of some of the adjuvant studies with um, PD-1 inhibitors. Those would be really transformative if they were positive.